um, and I would like to say a few words of introduction. But first, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Martin Sekel. I am the Deputy Director General in DG Sanko in the European Commission. Uh, and I must say it is also a privilege for me that this conference takes place in my own home country here in Malta. My main area of responsibility is the development and implementation of policy, and therefore I am very delighted to be able to discuss this issue together with such a distinguished panel and also such a knowledgeable audience of academics and practitioners. The aim of this session is to shed some more light on how the generation, dissemination and application of evidence can better contribute to improvements in population health. The issue and the challenge of how to get evidence into practice is indeed very relevant for the European Union which has as its main role in the area of health the identification and the funding of the development and the dissemination of evidence through support for all kinds of knowledge development activities, including research projects, research capacity, studies and reviews, demonstration projects, and wider dissemination. Europe today is facing many public health challenges. The economic situation threatens to undermine social protection systems, risking in particular the health of the most vulnerable. Health systems are stretched by budgetary pressures, as well as by increases in chronic disease, linked in great part to demographic aging, as well as the failure to adequately prevent key risk factors such as obesity, smoking, harmful patterns of alcohol consumption, and mental stresses. Inequalities in health between and within countries of Europe remain unacceptably high. The European Union is supporting its member states to renew public health policies and health systems to meet these challenges. We are ensuring that EU policies contribute in areas such as health threats, vaccination, clinical trials and medical devices. And we are working closely with the member states through what we call reflection processes, to closely examine what needs to change in health systems to deliver more health per euro invested, as well as to better prevent and manage chronic disease. Through the European semester, we are looking together at budget priorities and how health fits into this. And through the European Innovation Partnership on Healthy and Active Aging, we are stimulating innovation across the whole spectrum of health systems with the ultimate goal of gaining a two-year increase in healthy life years for the European population by 2020. And of course, scientific research and evidence is central to all of these endeavors. We need to discuss a number of key issues. Do we have the right balance between public health and biomedical research? Are we focusing on the right questions? Can we be more specific about what data and information are needed? Do we have the right idea of what evidence is? And to what extent is evidence available and is it being used? And most importantly and perhaps fundamentally, what could researchers, policy advisors and top decision makers do better? To help us consider these and other questions, we will hear from three prominent people engaged in the production of evidence, all of whom have a very close connection with policy. Louise Gunning Schepers, who is the president of the executive board of the University of Amsterdam. David Stuckler, who is lecturer in sociology at Cambridge University. And Laura Morlock, professor in the Department of Health Policy and Management at John Hopkins School of Public Health. And, and afterwards, I hope we'll have time for uh, a number of questions from the audience which I will invite the panel members to respond to. So without further ado, I would like to invite the first of our speakers, um, Dr. Louise Gunning Schapers. Uh, in addition to being president of the executive board of the University of Amsterdam, Dr. Gunning Schapers is a highly regarded academic and public health leader. She has held appointments at the University of Leuven, the Erasmus University of Rotterdam, as well as the University of Amsterdam and produced numerous publications. Her work for government includes being a staff member of the Dutch Ministry of Health, a member of the Scientific Committee for Government Policy, and chairing the Health Council of the Netherlands. Dr. Gunning Schapers, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, first of all, to Julian for inviting me to speak at this plenary. 
it is a delight to be back and to see this wide audience and to see old friends and hopefully new friends from UFA and from ASFER. And I think it's, an, it's a very important topic that we're addressing at this first plenary, and it's one that is going to be recurrent, I think, in many, many of the small group sessions as well, because it is, because it is and it stays something that we are not feeling very comfortable about. Uh, so I'm not going to give you the magic bullet. I'm not going to give you the answers, but I would like to share with you some thoughts. And I've given this presentation the title of valorization because it has become such a very important word in the European Union uh, research uh, endeavor. If you cannot show how your results are going to be valorized, you're not very likely to get any kind of research money from the EU. And many people interpret that word as if it were to mean only creating patents or even spin-off companies in which we can uh, create uh, possibilities for economic growth within Europe. And often, from the public health perspective, we kind of sit in a corner and say, isn't it unfair that they don't pay attention to the important research that we're doing? And maybe that is because we do not interpret that word fully as it should be interpreted. Because adding value to society, which is actually the translation of valorization, is something that we all feel very strongly about. Whether you're in the research side or in the practice side, we do research because we are convinced that creating knowledge is important for our future. We like to disseminate our knowledge. We feel strongly about implementing it. And increasingly, we're able and willing to assess the impact of what we do beforehand, before we make a decision, and afterwards to monitor, to see whether the practice mirrors what we expected of it in theory. That is adding value to society. And if we ask that question, we can look back and see how well we've done in the field of public health. And if an outsider were to come in and look back in, say, the last half century, you would say we haven't done very badly. Life expectancy has increased. Increasingly, you see that healthy life expectancy is increasing as well. And I remember when I was a very young um, civil servant in the Ministry of Health, we looked at future scenarios and predicted that maybe life expectancy of men and women would come closer together. And the minister was almost ready to, um, uh, uh, to say that we were not allowed to publish that. And now when you look at how we've been able to bridge that gap, we haven't done very badly. Some of the people here have been instrumental in estimating what the contribution to population's health has been of prevention. You know, Mackenbach is one of the names that comes to mind when you look at that. And it's quite impressive. And yes, more recently, effective healthcare has been very important in adding years to life and life to years. And when you look at policy, the fact that we all find evidence-based policy something that is normal to discuss means that we have found a way of getting research into the policy arena and getting practitioners to listen to what research tells us. And yes, the years that I uh, was allowed to function as the chair of the Health Council in the Netherlands have learned me that science advice is a very useful tool for public valorization to valorize the results of research into public, public health programs. But then, of course, the question is, could we have done better? Yes. When you look at our countries, there's still avoidable mortality and morbidity. We haven't been able to get the full benefit of what we know we could get. We still see vast amounts of healthcare utilization without benefits, and we pay for that. We see policy decisions that are not taken 
And I'm sure that you in your country can think of many um, scientifically available evidence that's not put into policy, even though you've been very successful in bringing it on the table of the person making that decision. I remember when the current Minister of Health came into office in the previous cabinet in the Netherlands. She turned back some of uh, the policies uh, on smoking. And you know that that is something that should not have been done. There's no way to avoid it. And when we look at new threats that we're not responding to, we're not using the knowledge that we have. Many of you in this room probably have no connection with the veterinarian world. And nevertheless, we know that zoonoses are going to be the most likely threat from the infectious disease program. We don't have a natural relationship there. And when I look back at the evaluation of what happened in the last pandemic in Europe, and I compare that to the US, I find that Europe is extremely cynical about the way research helped us make decisions. Now, I'm sure there are many lessons to be learned, but if we're too cynical about that, we know we're not going to be able to respond the next time around when the next pandemic come, comes. And it's only afterwards that we can look back and say, well, it wasn't as bad as we expected it to be. So how can we make sure that we keep that possibility of implementing research into practice very, very much alive. What, what could we change? Actually, when I look at the four issues that I had earlier, I think we do all right on knowledge creation. Actually, I think we are a pretty good research community. Uh, we sharpen each other, we make our methodologies work, and by the peer review of the proposals that we have increasingly at a European level, we've seen an enormous increase in the quality of the research done here, and we use the opportunities that Europe offers us in the fact that we do have different ways of attacking certain problems. And actually, we don't do too badly in knowledge, knowledge dissemination, that's to say, the dissemination that we're most used to, which is the scientific dissemination. But with the evaluation exercises that we have in the academic world, the lay press is no longer one of our priorities. And therefore, you might see a widening gap between what the research community knows and what the population for whom we're setting out uh, public health programs or practice-oriented uh, uh, interventions does not always have that same knowledge. It is not something that we're taught to think about, and we're not always very good at it. We really could do better there. And knowledge implementation, well, we're going to discuss that today, is something that we could think about in terms of using the right approach. The Health Council is going to publish a report in two weeks that I was allowed to chair on uh, the health effects of um, the intensive husbandry. And um, we don't find many health effects, but we know that the people living close to these farms are very worried. Now, are we just simply going to say we find no health effects? And if they don't listen, are we going to say it again and louder and with more numbers? Or are we going to listen to what the population worries about and help them place that within the context of what we know from science? Well, we've learned something in the last couple of years with the EU pro project on ISA in which um, organizations like the Health Council in the Netherlands or the Institute of Medicine in the US combined in a network called USEN. And some of those results are available to you as well on the web if you go to the USEN website. And the middle one, the framework for health advice uh, on health, provides certain principles that help translate the body of knowledge that we have through research into recommendations to policymakers. And some of the issues that are addressed there are issues I'm sure that concern many of you 
and I'm not going to elaborate on those here. We did that yesterday in a workshop, but I would urge you to just have a look at those publications. They might help you. Because I think that unless we get really, really good at adding value to society through our research, we're going to have a hard time maintaining that level of excellence. So in closing off, I just want to give two thoughts to you. Valorization, adding value to society, in an academic world, in the first place is done by educating the next generation. That's why it is so good that nowadays we have UFA and ASFR here together in this conference and that we have the young students and the young PhD students here as well because they're the ones that are going to produce the research, but also that are going to have the knowledge, the competencies to implement that research into practice, whether they go into an academic career or whether they go into a policy career. And when we talk about putting research into practice, um, I would also like for you to think about what our knowledge can do to help our governments. All of Europe is facing a severe recession. Some countries have a harder time than others. There's going to be massive cuts. And where are we in helping our governments in taking those cuts where they concern public health or health care in the right place? Are we there to make sure that those communities that might be most at risk do not suffer most from the cuts that are being made? And are we as researchers able to provide the evidence base for those programs